begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Ed, how you guys doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Oh my God, I just got done watching that debate, and my, <laughs> that was one of the worst debates I have ever seen. Trump was debating two people, Wallace and Biden. It was a disgrace. Disgrace you seen how biased this guy really was. And Fox News, go to hell, man. You know what? You have people like this idiot freaking uh, moderating. Each camp agreed that the moderator would just let the guys debate. But no, this guy was just jumping in. And actually, the internet is going wild right now saying Wallace sucks. It was a terrible damn debate. He'd give extra time to Biden. He'd cover for Biden. He wouldn't hardly let him talk about uh, Burisma and stuff, which really needs to be uh, uh, known. Kept on saying, oh, that's not true. That's all. Everybody's seen everything come out. The kid's son got freaking $3.2 million from Moscow, the mayor's wife. Are you kidding me? You can't see what's going on in this country? Well, uh, and then he got him. Which law enforcement agencies actually freaking supported you? He couldn't name one. Then I love how he says, you know what? You're not the smartest. What, you didn't even know what college you went to. Uh, sad state of affairs, man, that debate. And I was really disappointed in it. The American people didn't get to learn anything because you have these debate moderators injecting their liberal bias. They just don't stop, man. And then you got the report today that Hillary Clinton's the one who came up with all this Russia crap that put our country through two years, probably even more, of crap. And Obama and this idiot knew about it. How in the hell are you going to vote for it? And you know what? I know it. Well, you know what? Screw that. This is biker, uh, you know, related in the sense that bikers need to know the truth about what's going on in their country and they're sure to hell ain't gonna get it from the damn media the best thing I can tell anybody is to go to third party sources there's a lot on YouTube on both sides of the aisle get rid of this corporate media bullshit yeah I'm kinda fired up right now uh, cause People are tired of the media covering for the. It was like Wallace was helping him through the whole damn freaking debate. He seen he was stumbling, seen he wasn't there. That's what the American people need. For example, you elect this guy Biden. He's not going to be in control. You're going to have. He's freaking going to have puppet masters. That's not what a president of this country does. Well, we had the best economy. We left it for you. No, you didn't. What are you talking about? He had unemployment down to 3.3% before this virus crap. Well, I know how to handle it. Yeah, you were out there calling everybody xenophobic when they were in uh, that wicked witch of the West out there dancing around in Chinatown. It's just a joke. And you, if you really pay attention... You can see right through them. It was funny, Wallace. Do you, uh, d you know, tell you don't like? Uh, can you tell everybody you disavow about uh, white supremacists? Then, when asked about Antifa, he wouldn't. He, 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 Wallace kept on interrupting. Will you freaking disown Antifa? I, you know what? I, I don't know how they. You know, he does it, man. He's had this freaking media on him, and they're going to say, well, Joe Biden won. No, he didn't. And I hope people that were actually watching see through this crap. Portland. Well, you know, I'm a private civilian. I can't call. Yeah, you could have. Portland's been burning. Over 100 days already. 
it's sickening. And maybe that's why I'm all freaking freaked out right now is because with these boneheads, this country being some world of hurting, man. Well, mail-in ballots, there's been no proof. Really? It's all over the place there's proof. What you're seeing right now is what people in Chicago deal with every single day because they're too damn stupid to vote other than Democrats because they'll play, they'll, they'll promise them the world won't deliver and then again in four years they'll do the same. That's how ignorant people are in Chicago and I hate to say I'm from there. That's the reason why they have problems in Chicago. Because of these freaking radicals. This country, and I, you know what? I, I, I hate to say it. Soldiers who got killed for this country are rolling over in their graves right now how it's being run. These freaking, and you know what? I ain't gonna even say I'm uh, down the middle, man. These Democrats can go to hell, man. If you don't like what I say, unsubscribe, man. See you later. You sure to hell don't have any damn arguments when you, uh, well, Trump sucks. Okay, why does he suck? Tell me. Explain it to me. Make a argument. But you guys on the left don't do that. You don't go by arguments. You don't go by debate. You go with what the mainstream media and Twitter tells you to do. You know, with Twitter, we only have our RSS feed from Harley Liberty put over there. I really, you know, because some people, uh, you know, I'll check it once in a while, say, well, wh you know, we're all on Twitter, you know, you don't seem very active. It's because I can't stand Twitter. It's nothing but a liberal hellhole over there. Hellhole. I freaking post stuff on Facebook. I like going over there once in a while. Instagram, same thing. And why don't I spend much time on that platform? It's because I'm just tired of the freaking censorship. Do you know, with the Hollywood and China Dow show, we did, you know, some edgy stuff. But boom hit adults only. When did it come acceptable to be censored? It's insane, man. You actually seen it today, a freaking old bag called the president a joke. And this is the asshole whose son got all that millions and billions of dollars. He's talking about rich people? How's your pocket right now? Don't you wish somebody from Moscow would give you a check? That's how they, them people think. Every problem in this country, every one of them, have started because of that party. Everything from Civil War, Jim Crow, to what we got going on in the 60s and all that was started by them people. All of them on the coast, man. You know, people get upset with me because, you know, some of my views and especially on that BLM crap. And that's what it is, is crap. You are getting played. You're getting played so bad, it's funny. And I actually feel sorry for those who buy into their crap because I've lived in the Chicago almost all my life except the last few years. I see what they did to my beautiful city. I see how many people, because I look at the news, well, how many died today? And you're going to tell me that they're good for this country? Are you freaking crazy? On freaking real, man. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about the debates. I know my monologue started, uh, you know, what it is. and But I do believe this is biker news. And I believe it because us as bikers have a huge voting block. It's time to get educated. And those in the unions, you know what? I support unions 100%. My family's coal miner unions, freaking steelworker unions. And I can tell you, it's only the party bosses that support that freaking empty vessel. Most people know 
what's up now? But if you're a union member and you really vote for them idiots, you're freaking sad. They're the ones who gave you NAFTA. You know, the ones that lost all our manufacturing steel and all that stuff. Yeah, they gave you that. But you'll still vote for them, right? Idiots. Anyway, Biker News coming up uh, in a couple seconds. Uh, we're going to have, you know what's very interesting, Oz? It, it's very interesting. And the reason why I say that is they got a whole different culture over there. But they go from one club that's, you know, fighting another club, and they change positions and all that stuff. So you're going to see where an ex-Bandito president switched over to the Mongols that lead them. Very interesting stuff, man. Also, later on in the show, one of our main stories, that schluck out of New uh, Hampshire that killed the uh, seven... Uh, people, a lot of them members of the, the Jarheads MC, want some of his statements thrown out. Yeah, that's right, thrown out. So let's get on to uh, the news here. Yes, I'm a kind of uh, pumped up right now, if you can tell. Just, ugh, that was a terrible freaking debate, man, with that moderator. Let's go to the news. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, here we go from the UK. The Daily Mail. They're the ones who are really up on all the stuff going in uh, Australia. So this is a good source if you want some bikey information. Notorious bikey strongman Toby Mitchell is named boss of the Mongols OMCG after switching allegiances from their fierce rival. Very interesting stuff, man. Uh, you know, some pointers that it points out. Bikey uh, Toby Mitchell is the new boss. He was formerly a senior member of a rival gang, the Banditos, until 2013. He is believed to have patched into the Mongols in April 2019. Uh, interesting, man. That would have never happened here, I don't think. Uh, after news of his rise to the top of the Mongols broke on Friday, the heavily tattooed personal trainer took to Instagram to claim he had been the boss of the organization for 12 months. Why he would come out and respond to something like that, I don't know. But again, it's different over there. I do know they get some hot-ass chicks over there. <laughs> uh, I am looking at some of, uh, you know, if you're over on the radio, come over here. They have uh, the Mongols, uh, Florida, Malaysia, Thailand, Australia, Singapore uh, all together. Uh, Mitchell's defection to Mongols had led to a number of banditos coming over to join him, including... Ex-Banditos National President Jason Addison, according to the Herald Sun. Addison served as the National Banditos President for two decades, also uh, brought his sons to the Mongols. Mm, seems like a lot of stuff's going over there. Uh, my understanding is the Banditos in Australia uh, don't have communications with the United States Banditos, but I can't say that for sure because I'm on the outside looking in. That's just some of the stuff I've heard. About 10 former Banditos have joined the Mongols in recent months. The Mongols' ranks have swollen since Mitchell took over, and they are now boast more than 100 members. That's pretty good, man. Uh, it was initially thought Mitchell joined the Mongols in uh, 2019, Really, I don't understand why he put out the statement he's been in charge because anything that's happened between, uh, you know, then and now with all the crap that goes on over there, he could be looked at hardcore. And he just dry ratted himself, if you ask me. Uh, social media picture showed the 44 year old smiling while wearing a black t shirt with the word Mongols written across it in large font. He was also apparently been spotted several times at the Mongols Clubhouse in Port Melbourne. Mitchell is a veteran bikey and convicted criminal who has survived the two attempts on his life and has spent time behind bars. In June 2016, he was sentenced to almost two years in jail after he was busted with drugs 
and a weapon in his car. You know, they lived a life for bikers over in Australia, man. This guy's got freaking a silk robe on, gold uh, trim. They lived a life. See, bikies and bikers are two different things. You know, bikies over there, bikers over here. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much in the lifestyle. And I hate to say this, but, you know, Australia is more into the gangster stuff. You know, you can tell just by the act and the way they look, you know. They all up in the workout clothes and, you know, looking all pretty and <laughs> always got to look pretty over there, man. Uh, anyway, he pleaded guilty to possessing ice, cocaine, and a baton after police searched his car and Docklin's apartment in 2015. They found snap ba uh, lock bags containing 331.8 grams of meth. And 168 uh, grams of coke. Uh, the baton was uh, found in the driver's door. In a patent, uh, passing sentence, a Judge Hicks said, You are a reasonably lengthy uh, criminal history. I accept uh, by your pleas of guilty that you have some remorse. Again, and you know, they all dress up. Uh, well, they're younger kids. I guess they dress different than us older bikers, but they do have hot ass women over there. I guess money does help. Uh, the judge noted that Mitchell required ongoing medical attention after he was shot five times in the back outside uh, of a Brunswick gym. He had 21 surgeries to save his life and further nine to deal with complications. Uh, a lot of people, and I'm probably going to piss some people off, when you're talking motorcycle gangs, you know, look at Australia, man. You cannot freaking cover for some of the stuff that they do over there and when you see them walking around with million dollar freaking homes and cash in their pockets you, you know you got to say something uh that's not what it is about anyway here's what i was talking about uh usa news judge considers suppressing statements in biker crash case uh, attorneys for the pickup driver whose collision with a group of bikers last year left seven motorcyclists dead Say some of his statements made to police should not be part of the upcoming trial. Why? It's always made against us. That's why you don't talk, man. You know, just give them your name, your birth date, social, whatever they need to confirm who you are, and then ask for attorneys, man. The pickup driver whose collision with a group of bikers last year left seven motorcyclists dead made some statements to police that should not be part of his oncoming trial, his lawyers told the judge. Why not? Everything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Attorneys for the driver said their client indicated during the police interview last June that he was not able to continue the interview and that the continuation of questions was a violation of his Miranda rights. Quote, right now, I don't even want to answer anything. Like, I'm just out of it. According to a transcript, including in the court filings. Hmm. You're out of it, huh? <laughs> Police halted the interview briefly before continuing to question him about drug use and his actions the day of the crash. Quote, I would submit the appropriate question would have been, what do you mean you don't want to answer questions? Does this mean you are describing how you feel, or are you asserting right to stop questioning? Adding that it was not his client's re responsibility to know what magic words to use to stop the interview. Well, he's been rested before. He had some, uh, you know, experience in this, and everybody knows, hey, I want a lawyer, stops the interview. Prosecutor argued uh, his comment was ambiguous and did not merit ending in the interview. The lone witness in the video her hearing, New Hampshire State Police Sergeant Michael McLaughlin, was present for the question. He confirmed that uh, the driver had been read the Miranda warning at the beginning of the interview and stood, understood it and waived those rights. When he talked about not feeling well and wanting to stop, McLaughlin testified that he interpreted that as a description of how he felt after coming off drugs, not that he was refusing to answer any further questions. Prosecutors have previously submitted documents objecting to his request for bail 
in which they allege that he had fentanyl, morphine, and a chemical in co- found in cocaine in his system that day. Well, if this was an um, unambiguous and unequivocal statement, there wasn't any clarification needed, Assistant Attorney General Scott Chase told the court. But at no point does the state ever concede that it was anything other than an ambiguous statement. Every time I read one of the, the, the story on this, it pisses me off about this. Uh, you know, the public defender in this case is just looking for uh, the press. You know, you know, he's probably doing this for this kid, but you know, everybody else can go screw themselves. He was appearing in an orange prison jumpsuit and wearing a mask, sat next to his attorneys, but did not speak during the hearing. And no date has been set for trial. Uh, Superior Court Judge Peter Borstein said he would take the matter under advisement and issue a ruling later. He pleaded not guilty to multiple counts of negligent homicide and driving under the influence. He remains in custody. So that's uh, the ongoing news, what's going on in that case with that schmuck that killed all them bikers. Now, let's go over to bikers, Dad. Bikers ride to support military museum in West Virginia. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. Let's see what they have to say here if it loads up. (laughs) Three local biker groups this morning for an event honoring the museum's message. Bikers for Christ, Forged Alliance RC, and Chrome Dragons RC all participated in the very first Promise Ride based on the Promise Museum founder Ron McVaney made his friends who died in combat that he would never let the nation forget the sacrifices they had made. Each group said that they found it important to help out the museum during these difficult times and to support the ideals that it stands for. The uh, the Mountaineer Military Museum is the only place that I know of in West Virginia that has the dedication and the the support for their veterans. We're personal friends with the owners and trying to keep them afloat during this pandemic is our number one goal. All those groups went on a a two-and-a-half-hour ride that ended at Lambert's Vintage Winery. Good stuff, man. Good stuff right there. Uh, Let me uh, refresh this here, man. Uh, You know what? I hate when they do this crap with the ads to support local journalism. But are you really a freaking journalist? You know, we've seen that tonight. But anyway, uh, out of WCF Courier... Uh, neighbors recount living next door to private club where shooting occurred. Again, we do not have the freaking name of the club in there. Uh, only that uh, they rented something uh, downstairs. Uh, from Waterloo, the private club downstairs could get loud, but it was about what one would expect living next to a bar. According to people residing and working next to what would become the scene of one of the worst local shootings in recent memory. Quote, they bumped music down there pretty loud, pretty late, said Rob uh, Thompson, who lives uh, upstairs and to the left, where eight people were shot, two fatally. So two died in that gun battle uh, in the early hours uh, on Saturday. Thompson, who has lived there for a few years, said he had been inside the location in its prior incarnation as a pipe shot, but not since a motorcycle club began leasing the space for its gatherings earlier this year. Quote, they always invited me down there on my way upstairs. They were being friendly. He said the club didn't keep regular hours. It was just open when they had events, mostly on the weekends, occasionally on a weekday. Uh, Thompson, a bartender by trade, was used to the noise. Downstairs, uh, John Parsons uh, ran uh, Cedar Valley Tattoo and Piercing next door in the same building for about six years. He said most of the time you wouldn't know a club was there. Rock on, rock on. Uh, Let's see here. Police continued to hold the scene for almost two days during the investigation. Residents were able to remain in their apartment. But had to check in with uh, police when they came and went. After police released scene uh, Sunday night, Parsons discovered a bullet from the club had pierced the wall into his uh, business. The projectile came through a shared wall. Again, if we get the uh, club's name in this, uh, we'll let you know. But they are keeping this right to the pockets, man. 
Uh, WMBF News. The fellowship is great. Strong turnout for first day a fall bike rally despite the next weather. several days Merle's Inlet will be biker central as the fall bike rally officially kicked off today Patrick Lloyd has a look at how day one has gone so far well as you can see this isn't exactly ideal biker weather here rain came into the area around two o'clock this afternoon that scattered a lot of bikers leaving them uh, to find somewhere that wasn't wet uh, but before the rain came in a lot of people were definitely having a good time Here's video from before the rain came in. You can see quite a lot of people down here, more than there were for day one of the rescheduled spring bike rally that actually took place in the summer. One biker I spoke with says she came here with a group from her church in Clover, South Carolina, and this is the first time she's been here in about 15 years. She says she's loved what she's seen so far. Love it. You know, just the atmosphere's great. Uh, the fellowship with all the bikers is great. Love meeting new people. You come down here and it's like you know everybody and you don't know them from Adam, but you feel like you know them. Now, many of you may recall bike rallies nationwide have really caused some concern about them being potential coronavirus spreading events. A rally held earlier this year in Sturgis, South Dakota, brought in thousands of bikers from all over the country. Also, Biker Bar here in Merle's Inlet SBB has gone back and forth with the South Carolina Department of Commerce regarding how many people showed up to their events over the summer. Many people criticized some bikers for not wearing masks or socially distancing. Based on my observations today, I also did not see a lot of people wearing masks here, but some bikers say they don't think people should automatically assume bikers are bad people because some of them don't choose to wear masks. Anywhere you go, you're going to have uh, trouble with a few here or a few there, but most bikers are, are loving people. Uh, they'll stop on the side of the road and help a stranger in a heartbeat. Oh, man, you got to love her, man. So, uh, yeah, the rally's going on down there. Uh, hopefully you guys stay safe. Next, hundreds of bikers in northern Nevada are protesting uh, the COVID-19 response. Oh, man, uh, Street Vibrations was canceled. Sissy Lack Sucks is the new rally that bikers got going down there. Uh, uh, like most uh, large events in Nevada, Street Vibrations was canceled. Like most large events in Nevada, Street Vibrations was canceled this year due to restrictions on public gatherings put in place to curb the spread of COVID-19. But some bikers participated in their own version of the event over the weekend. KUNR's Lucia Starbuck has the story. Hundreds of bikers came from across Nevada and California to take part in the ride. They drove through Reno and Virginia City. The Street Vibrations Fall Rally 2020 was supposed to take place over the weekend, but the organizers said in a statement that their special event application was denied because the event would exceed Governor Steve Sislak's limit of 50-person gatherings. In response, the bikers gathered for their own ride, which they called the Sislak Sucks Street Vibrations Rally. Many criticized Sislak for his COVID 19 response, including Kim Johansson from Winnemucca. He shut down our economy and he's devastating our small businesses and he needs to lift the mask mandate and get everybody back to work. Johansson is a behavior analyst and said she's been out of work since mid-March. I haven't been able to work at all because I work generally in the schools and they want a lot of third parties on school campuses. Johansson applied for unemployment benefits and said it took six weeks for her to receive them. She wants the governor to step down. But for others, the bike ride was less political. Tony Islas rode about six hours from Monterey, California. He okay, that's uh, some of what's uh, happening. I, I, I wish everyone had that audio on there. I wouldn't have to say nothing. Uh, but anyway, uh, that protest and the cancellation, oh uh, man, you know what? It only happened in Democratic states, man. Corey Graff's wall of shame. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Waterloo Regional Police Officer arrested on charges of breach of probation for the third time in the last two months. A Waterloo Regional Police Officer has been arrested. This time, Waterloo's police uh, say a veteran officer has been charged with breach of probation by police. The officer, a 21-year-old, 20-year uh, member with the force, was arrested. 
They say the officer was convicted in January of 2019 on three counts of assault and another count of weapons. The recent arrest stems from probation with the regards to those convictions. The incident occurred while the officer was off duty. Police added that the officer is currently suspended without pay. Do you think that would have happened when the first incident happened? I don't know. Uh, the two officers were arrested in uh, August with connection to off duties. As in the other two cases, police say they are not releasing the officer's name to protect the victim or the identity of the victim. <laughs> Get out of here. Anyway, let's go to my final. Guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Rock on, baby. Don't forget to go over to uh, Hollywood and China Dow's uh, YouTube channel. You'll love it, man. We had an episode 20 today. Oh, poor China doll. Poor China doll. I was going into where. Anyway, you know, always fun over there. But my final thoughts. Uh, you got my uh, thoughts on that debate tonight, man. I'm not going to try to keep on going into that. It kind of pisses you off when you think about it. And, you know, I'm trying not to think about it. Uh, but it's very important for bikers to go out there and freaking vote. You just seen the story out in Nevada where they canceled street vibrations because all these damn lockdowns. And my area of the Illinois, you know, the bars are going to have to go outside again. It's just getting ridiculous, man. It really is. I understand there's a lot of people that died from this. There's a lot of people that have tested positive for this. But you do not shut down the economy. What them numbers ain't telling you is, hey, you're going to have suicides, divorces, the whole nine yards. They don't tell you that kind of stuff. No, they're too busy lying or a moderator freaking covering for them. That's the way it goes. So get out there and vote because bikers, you have the power. Get out there and vote, man. Uh, as far as uh, Australia, I know I'm going to get pushback on that one. What can you say when somebody's walking around in a silk robe, you know, uh, the gold trim, million dollar houses, what do you call that? You don't see a lot of bikers doing that around here, and you surely don't see a hell of a lot of bikers go on Instagram and say, yeah, you know, I've been uh, the boss for 12 months. Man, you're walking yourself into a world of freaking hurt, man. A world of hurt acknowledging that you're actually the boss what the hell is going on out there for you guys and eyes you got to tell me what's up man you really do because you got to straighten me out on that stuff uh as far as that driver's concern i have nothing ever good to say with about him i guess <laughs> i ain't you know i am kind of biased again today uh nothing good to say about him you know what you were read your miranda rights you were high you were drunk you killed seven people. That's the way it is. Have some dignity. Take freaking responsibility for your actions so the family doesn't have to keep going through this stuff. And the freaking defense attorney, yeah, we all know about you, buddy. You're out there getting the limelight off of seven dead people. That's what I got to say about you. And uh, be careful uh, at the rally. And it's great doing uh, the stories that we do for uh, the good that uh, the community does. And uh, I guess, well, wall of shame, man. I, are we starting to see a pattern with the wall of shame, guys, man? They do a lot of crap, man, that they try placing on bikers, but they're ruthless. They do it as well, man. Uh, so, but with that, I am going to end the show. Don't forget, man, get on over there. Check out uh, China Doll and everybody. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys.